So you in how many people know or use Kotlin here before? Okay. Just what? Okay. So yeah, I am not very far though, but it is. So this talk is going to be about DSLs. I hope I don't have to introduce DSLs also, or uh, people have ideas about domain specific languages. So I will skip that part. And so Kotlin is a language which is particularly suitable for creating very nicely looking DSLs. The, on the surface, they look super clean. And uh, sometimes the languages help. So we'll go over that. This is me, not the dragon, somebody standing in front of it. So this is in our office. So I work for a company called Raincode Labs. And we mainly create programming languages and compilers and tools and interpreters. So besides that, I wrote a few books. So this is a shameless advertisement, if you will, but <laughs> yeah. So, so this is what we do. We write compilers, we do interpreters and all that. And we are the biggest individual independent compiler company. In that way, because you can go to Microsoft and say, or you know, Google, they have huge amounts of compiler engineers, but you cannot say, go to them and say, make a compiler for us. They would not do that, but we do that. So, and so this talk is not about my company, but I'm trying to introduce because we are studying new here in Bangalore. Basically, we are a Belgium based company. So this is our technology stack. And uh, this is our target platforms that we use. So we uh, do uh, mostly compilers are written in C sharp and uh, they are targeting to Microsoft IL. And we have, we have been awarded twice by Microsoft as the legacy modernization team because we help customers to port their runtimes and the, from the mainframe to .NET. And so that's what we do. And we are hiring. <laughs> so if anybody interested, please talk to me afterwards. This is our fancy office in Bangalore. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going. You want to tell something? So I'll, I'll skip this part because everybody is fam, you know, familiar with DSLs. So why Kotlin? Because to me, it, first time it made sense because it's a probably one of the sim, you know, pragmatic programming language on JVM after Scala. Um, but Scala is too, too much to digest for many people. <laughs> and uh, so I think Kotlin is a very nicely placed programming language. Plus it has uh, support for almost any conceivable platform these days. So I'll skip this also because these are the comparison with friends. Like it is almost like Swift, uh, but if you want to follow along, I hope that is probably impossible because of the internet. If everybody connect, it will be bad. So uh, we will do little, I will show some demonstrations. So I'll check whether uh, it's connect or not. So for you can go here and directly try. Oh, oops. Just because it is the browser, that's why. Okay, I'll change it. Then. Now it's back. Okay. Okay, let, let it okay. So so I think that's a little bit uh, problematic, but we'll manage. So. I think you can see it now. Okay. So this is, there is a, this, it's a REPL provided with command line, uh, Kotlin command line uh, REPL. 
So here you can, Kotlin provides multiple features that are suitable for like extension functions. So if I want an extension, I want to extend the integer class, I can say like this. So what it does is it creates a method called plus on the integer class and I can take an argument which is of type integer and this refers to the calling object which is this. So at this point it will create that. So the bad part of this repel is it's also you know just paste it the expression on that. So it is a little bit annoying but apart from that it is good. So I can now say 2 plus 2, 4. So this is an extension function. And it is very handy for situations uh, that we will we'll come across later. Another thing that many, uh, C sharp also has extension function but C sharp does not have extension property which is very interesting. So, so let us say I want to design uh, extension property called so, so I am designing an extension property called the, oops. Oops, oops. <laughs> okay, it's probably good to show it here than there or here. So you can design an extension property like this. So we here we are creating an extension property called factorial and that will create a property on the integer class and uh, so now if I will try to comp I think I will compile this already. So okay, let me go back. This is, um, sorry about that. Okay, here it is. Let's create, okay, it's here. Okay, let, let me try this. Yeah. So, okay, so this is a handy feature, you can load uh, this thing. Yeah, so basically I can, here I, I have, it's like a script. So I have this, all the functions and all the properties that I want is here. And uh, so now I can use any of these already. Since factorial was defined here and I can uh, have it here. So that's extension property. Let's go back to slides. Uh, then we have infix operator, which is very, very interesting. I did not see it in many, any other language and it is I, it felt very nice that you can do that. So for example, I can do like, let me just, so I can define a function called infix, then say fun and as an extension function plus other int other plus this. What this lets me do this, I can do this. So I am actually placing the function inside the, the operator and that's very, very, you know, interesting to see. And we will see some nice use cases later on. And then we have variable arguments. So I can have a function called Another extension function, say, uh, 
and the variable arguments take this, the var args. If you say var args, that means you are the number of arguments will be variables. Then you say prefixes and they are all of the type string and then you define it. What the hell is going on? Okay, not a good day. So I will. Uh, okay, let me write it here. So fun string dot starts with any of where arg prefixes string. Now I say this dot any. So this is the lambda and say sorry. Any so prefixes dot any. It this starts with it. I hope this will compile. It does. So now I say Sudipta dot starts with any of a s nothing. I did not return it here. So I should so, yeah. Yeah, so this is now complaining because it thinks that it's the return is is not I did not provide it the return type. So that statical static typing is helping us here. So now we give this it's true. So it's a point of success, moment of pride. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to our uh, so operator overloading is general purpose. I, I will not use operator overloading today, so I'll skip it. It's a huge section, but you can use operator overloading with a predefined set of functions, and you can overload plus, minus, increment, decrement, uh, assignment equal to like multiply, uh, you know, some uh, application then equal to. And then we will use the, this another very interesting feature in few programming languages like F sharp has this backtick method. So you can have spaces inside the name of the method. So that is really interesting to see. So for example, you can have say, uh, say like things like, I think it is always coming at the bottom. So let it go up. So you say fun, say hello. And then say name string is equal to, then you say hello. And then string interpolation. So you have string interpolation in dot Kotlin. So you can directly, whatever variable you have, you can do that. So now that we have that, I can, sh I should be able to say, say hello. So this get little bit interesting because now we want to mix and match a few things. So we say, uh, I am trying to do something very desperate, which is I uh, want to cook up one uh, DSL live here, which is, uh, so this one. Uh, so basically uh, this, this is that, that we have the Fibonacci series, we all are familiar with it. So I uh, carefully chosen the examples so that the toy examples 
are such that everybody can relate to it and so that they learn the toy example and back home they can try it. So that's why the idea is. So this is the DSL that we want to implement is like, okay, let me try to pull it up bigger, HDMI, okay. So Fibonacci number is uh, represented like first two digits are one, the numbers are one and one, and then you go on increasing the number. So if you uh, describe the Fibonacci series to a five year old, you will say like that, like start with one and one and then use the Fibonacci rule is add these two numbers and then go on. So if you see here, I have carefully color coded it so that the start with and the then follow and whatever is in the white are the phrases of the language, which are static parts of the language. It does not move. But whatever is in the green is actually the moving parts of the language, like the seeds are the, move, the new thing that you can give and the rule is dynamically, you can change. So the DSL that we, are, we want to create will look like something like this. We'll say start with one and one because then we get the seeds. Then we give the generator. We don't want to generate it as right now because it will generate lazily. When we say for, and then we say that's many times, then we go and generate that. Does that ring a bell or have questions? Okay. So let's do this quickly here. So I think I have the FIBO function somewhere carefully kept. So, okay, we don't have the time for everything, but we'll go over this. So I'll open this in IntelliJ. Okay, so here is what we do. So we create a start with, a start with is a method with a back ticks and we take a seeds which is a pair of integer and integer. So Kotlin gives us a key value pair but there is no key and no value, it, it's like a pair. And then we return a mutable list of integers, just uh, I could have. And then we have another extension method on mutable list of integer which is then follow no, don't look at the down one, I think. I'm talking about this highlighted piece. So here, what it does is, it takes a mutable list of integer, and then it gets the rule. So the rule is the last two integers, and you get another integers. So it is basically taking a functor, if you will, so this, this rule uh, is taking the rule uh, as the functor. We are giving like the integer, integer, and it is returning a pair of the mutable list of the seeds. These are the seeds and the rule. So at this point, we are ready to generate it, but we will not generate it as yet because we don't know how many you want. For that, we have uh, this for method, which is here. Down, 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 where is for? Yes. So for is a method on extension method on pair of mutable list and a pair and the rule. And then we iterate over how many times you want and generate it and using memoization. So we keep the last two and keep it in the list. And then we add the second one and then we go on, go on adding it. And at the end, we return the list. So let's try to run it. And there is a fancy uh, little extension, this, like we have the in dot times. Basically, when we, when we say in English, we say do it 10 times. We don't say do it 10. We don't stop like that. So that flow should be there. When you express a DSL, that it should be as close to the expressivity that we want to that. So let's try to do that. So let me say okay so i think it's already copied so try to load it okay good so now i should be able to say uh, for m in start with one and one 
then follow FIBO for 10 times. Print ln m. Okay, so it does not really. Okay, let me. Let's quit from here and create a jar and run, try to run it. Please compile. Okay, good. So there, there is still some intricacies with the REPL that I have yet to figure out or it is buggy because uh, I don't know that for sure, but it works either way. So if, if we fail to use the REPL, I can create a kt.kt .kt or .kts file, then I can compile it and make a jar and then run it here. So any question here on this? Okay. Is this interesting or is this little bit different than what you knew? Okay. No answer. <laughs> okay. okay. So let us go to the next one. Uh, so this is Armstrong numbers as we all know. Uh, basically, this is another example from this. So this time we will do a little bit uh, fancy thing. So number theorists are always working on these numbers like we are all taught like the sum of the cues and we know that. And uh, if we take the closer look of the free form query that we want to support is this is what we want to support. And this is the mapping that in like if you see the bold part on the left and see on the right they map although their orientations their you know their locations does not match up quite well but that's how so this is the target uh, internal dsl which will make a developer happy so if you are working on something which is super complicated and you get nice building blocks then you can join these pieces together and this will make our mathematician happy because he will probably not be able to, it's too cumbersome for him to write it that way on the left hand side, but he will like the free form query. So another disparate demo attempt is to create, uh, to show the uh, external DSL implementation. So we will be able to write on the queries in the almost free from English like syntax and we'll get the results. So let's see. So let's first show the effect, then we'll go over the since, uh, so when I have so many complicated functions and all that, I do not try to do it in the REPL because the REPL keeps pasting things and it becomes very annoying. So here we compile that uh, example. Okay, so now clear the screen. Okay, now for try to, so this query, it is a, now we are running the external DSL. So now I will write the, basically what I will do is for demo sake, I will try to copy paste this code because, uh, so this, this code here. So this is the code, so let's say this. and go here and paste it. So it says 
the sum of the cubes of the digits of the number is the number itself. And the idea is to give the mathematician a console where she can express herself in this uh, manner. And then we hit enter and we get this back. So bind the story, uh, this we, and a lot of other things are going on. So we will run it again for another query, which is again on the, so if some of the factorials, uh, again, this is the toy example, please don't concentrate too much on the complexity of the example itself, but it is uh, to prove a point. So it says the sum of the factorials of the digits is the digits itself. So there are so many numbers like that. And these numbers have you know, uses many places. So, so this is the example uh, demo. Now let me go back to the code and try to show you the code. Okay, so uh, this is ILEO taking me rest, okay, sorry. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. We have a digits uh, extension method on type of integers and we return a mutable list of integers and we return the number of digits. So let's break it up now. So now let's try to load this script and uh, do every little bit pieces in action. So do like this and then we do that. So it's already loaded. Now I have one, five, three. No, I, I have to go, sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to go to the, it's not the ripple, I'm sorry. Okay, now we are in the REPL. Now we say load that file. And please come back. Okay, you have, we have so many other things that we cannot do this here. Okay, let me, uh, okay, so we have digits here. Actually, it would have been really nice. Let me copy this piece by piece and now see what happens. So, since this bracket is here, it will be terminated. So I think. Uh, just like that. I mean, because I wanted to add the digits one by one, I, instead of adding it. Uh, oh, the signature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just by accident. I did not intend to, I mean, is no problem returning a list. Essentially, we probably will be returning a sequence. Yeah. So let me try that. So, okay. So now we have the digits function in. So now we can say 153 dot digits. Now it gives us this. So, uh, so REPL gives us a nice idea to how our code is going, which direction and all that. So it's really nice. And then we have, where are you? Yes, here, cubes. Okay, okay. sorry. Okay, now we have cubes. So now we can say 153 dot digits dot cubes. And since cubes is returning us a mutable list, we can always call the actual sum method, which is readily available. We don't have to design it. So it's 153. So behind the scene also some other examples was going on because we are composing the function. So, so this, um, because I, I want to apply uh, some transformation on the digits because I want to cube or factorial, then I want to sum them up. 
So when they sum, they become integer. When they start, they become integer. In between, their list of integers. So that is A, B, and C. Uh, basically, a generic composition method that we take a function that takes B to C, another one that takes A to B, and we return by applying themselves. Uh, then we get A to C. And this is pretty straightforward, but looks uh, really you know different. And you remember that we had that factorial. Um, property of an integer. Now here we are exploiting that we are having a factorials. So if we uh, if we do this, because here we are actually projecting the factorial and getting a list of factorials. So that is all. All other things are like mappings. And the magic of that query that I gave and that is happening here. So I am creating multiple uh, functions that can check for uh, whether they are fact, you know, Armstrong numbers or other type of numbers using this compose method. And then I am creating a map of their keys and thus, and then whatever query you give, we, I look through the tokens and if I find something matching, I create a switch. So, and this switch can be fuzzily determined so that I can say, okay, you, instead of cubes, somebody wrote cube. So that matching can be done. So I sense that it means to get to the factorial number or the Fibonacci number. And from there on, I look in the keys. And then if it is matches, I invoke that rule. So it's basically a, we are leveraging an internal DSL to create an external DSL. OK. Any question here? No question. No question is always good. <laughs> okay, so. so here it is in the picture, little bit uh, under the hood. So uh, like just for the hammer home that we create, it's like Lego blocks as we all know, functions are like Lego blocks. So we combine them together and under the hood we have this compose method. Demo is over. I did not realize that I will hit the grandpa. Uh, so this, uh, this is the third and the final DSL that I want to show you a glimpse of. It is targeted for writing unit tests in Kotlin. There are several problems that I personally feel, it's my humble opinion, that exist in current unit testing framework. Whenever somebody introduces a new framework, they say there is some problem with the existing things, right? So this, this is my take on the current unit testing framework uh, landscape. That there, my biggest concern is that they can only be used in test. Like so much work is going down the drain because you cannot use an assert.is true inside your, you know, inside your common normal. Nobody does that. That's like and then it is not uh, basically very important point is the third one is like uh, no free lunch. So you did not fill in the message that what is expected if the test fails, you would not get. You just say assert fail. I mean, nobody is giving you free messages like, okay, you compared like A and B and A and B are different. It's expected of the framework to fill that message in for us, but they don't do that. So these are the three design principles uh, that I embarked upon that I say I think are justified for a testing frameworks. Like uh, you can read it, but the last one is very important. Like you should have sensible auto field message always. Okay, I'll skip it. So the difference, just feel the difference on the slide. Uh, so this first line is a normal as a true statement. And the developer did not write the message that should come if this test fails. So if the test fails, no message, first thing. And second thing is, if this code appears in a unit test where another 10 lines are down below, that breaks on the drop of a hat. If this line goes, everything below does not even get executed, boom. So no glue. So the second, I mean, it's not geared for gluing pieces together. It's like one at a time, one at a time. 
and most of the time our unit tests are not exactly testing exactly one piece one you know head of a nail it is like testing a square feet area i mean so it the surface area for testing is too low and then the this this is what i am proposing in this framework is you write in this type of language this is readable and if you fail it will automatically populate the error message for you it is glueable because of the extension methods and the infix and all that there is a couple of more examples from the library that i am proposing so don't look at the numbers that first example that looks stupid because obviously the second does not make sense instead of 34 assume that it's a function call like like some number some number or age should be between or something like that um this is this is glueable code so this is the problem like continuation is the key so you should be able to chain your methods and our you know the expectations and some demo again hopefully it will compile okay so this is how it is organized can we go to internet one second so all this code that i have shown so far are on github i no matter how small they are so that you can if this if you have access to the slide you can go to this code any time and so let me go here so it should be a walk like by the lake it should not be difficult and this is an example so this please check method you see how fluid it looks and and it says infix function in action so you have multiple conditions and so uh, at the end you are checking like whether the first one is success or second one is success and this is the glue i was talking about this and thing and when you fail everything your failure message will be aptly populated whether the name is failing or that is failing so even if it fails it this method will not crash that's the whole idea and uh, it is uh, on github and i will put whatever i have and later anybody can contribute so this is the diction i think i am starting with like uh, should be should not be like uh, you know it's like and it is uh, it is going to be classified in five different uh, files the like grandpa numbers text date time and utilities the uh, date time numbers text are almost self explanatory the utilities are the glue that we use and so that's the most fancy stuff i will show you that and uh, like what is the glue here so utilities 5 minutes okay i am almost done i just uh, want to say this yeah <coughs> so the idea is to have instead of returning a boolean for assert true or assert false or throw an exception idea is to return a type of triple or like the first one if it is successful or not pass it around like for each checks it is like one person is standing and checking okay assume your test okay you are on age is between this it is not or not i will write that and i'll pass it to the next guy and okay he will write is it true or false then it passes so basically at the end your the data structure it gets populated with you know fields like that and it it has uh, like uh, and you see this is a very fancy uh, example I, i let me find out here yeah so see this see this three line 78 to 80 so first condition says 22 should be between 4 and 
and the second condition say in ABFS, it's a very like a genome testing or something like this proteins GCTA is made of this. And then you will say among C1, we say like that, we say among these two condition at least one should be true. We don't say like take this list of condition and check if any of them, is. we don't say like that. So we say like this, so if you see the you know, notation for among, it's like nothing but uh, like this. So it just takes uh, variable arguments of something, so it's t and just create the tree and just pass it around. So most of the times the function will look superficial, superfluous, not necessary, but they are necessary to communicate on the surface area of the DSL. So I will leave it to that and then question and answer. And thank you and we are hiring again and if anybody interested you can and all these are here and this is my coordinate iisudipta at raincode.com and we do all kinds of programming stuff. So programming languages basically what we do is we so dead we code for 4GLs and dead languages like COBOL, PL1, they are not dead, they will never be dead, <laughs> will be dead but they will still be alive because uh, there is a humongous amount of code that is written in those languages. But the providers are shying away, they are stepping down. So the customers all over the world, they want another people. So we come in and we say, we provide you a compiler. So they, we have compilers for COBOL in .NET, they, it's Visual Studio integrated and it's in, in, uh, in .NET Core for Linux. So, and we have compilers for languages you have never heard of because <laughs> nobody uses them in these days. So, please, uh, any questions? No question means two things. Either we did not understand anything or we are sitting here by respect. <laughs> we'll just get out. <laughs> okay, then. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.